Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Nuclear Criticality Safety Lecture Series. Today we're going to discuss the WISPR Upper Subcritical Limit Method, which uses extreme value theory to estimate USLs for critical systems. WISPR is one of the newest USL estimation methods, having been developed by Kudrowski in 2014, and it is designed to be inherently conservative when it estimates upper subcritical limits. Rather than computing bias estimates in USLs like traditional USL methods, WISPR opts to instead calculate the calculational margin, CM, which accounts for the subcritical margin and delta K AOA, but in place of the computational bias estimate, it computes a margin, M, that guarantees that the application will be sufficiently subcritical. So how does extreme value theory work? Well, from the big picture, Extreme value theory bounds the computational bias for our application using the worst case computational bias that's observed from a population of critical benchmark experiments. If we want a conservative USL estimate, then this approach makes a lot of sense. We could try to precisely estimate the computational bias using training analysis or some other method, or we could simply assume that the computational bias in our application is well approximated by the most extreme bias that exists among our benchmark experiments. This approach has the helpful side effect that adding benchmark experiments that have a less extreme bias pretty much does not affect the USL. Rather than trying to identify similar benchmark experiments or worrying about similarity metrics, we can simply consider every single benchmark experiment available. Adding more experiments to the pool cannot hurt our USL calculation. It can only make the USL more conservative. So how does extreme value theory work? Well, if we consider a distribution of likely computational biases for one single experiment that is given by a normal distribution, then the probability that a randomly sampled bias will have a value that is less extreme than some point, x0, is described by this f of i of x function. If we then consider multiple critical experiments, each described by their own bias distribution, then the probability that our randomly sampled bias will be less than some x0 is equal to the product of the f sub i functions for each distribution that we consider. x0 is so far to the right of two of the three distributions here that it is virtually guaranteed that these two distributions will not produce a bias that is greater than x0, meaning that the value of fi these distributions is approximately equal to 1. And so, we see that our overall f of x function tends to be dictated by only the most extreme, farthest to the right bias distributions. If we want to tweak our math such that the bias distributions are weighted unequally, then our f sub i functions would be described by this expression. So how does WISPR use extreme value theory to estimate USLs? Well, WISPR tries to find the value of x0, represented by m, that corresponds to our desired confidence interval for the upper subcritical limit. We iteratively adjust the value of m until we have a 95% or 98% probability that a randomly sampled bias will be less than this value of m. This approach has several advantages, the first of which being that adding additional benchmark data points can only lower the USL, thus only making it more conservative. Just like how two of those three distributions didn't really affect the limit for x sub naught, adding benchmark bias distributions that are far to the left of the most extreme cases has almost no effect on the calculational margin. This is one huge advantage for the WISPR method. Rather than worrying if experiments are sufficiently similar, we can simply use all candidate benchmark experiments, and WISPR will set its USL based on the most conservative case. Another advantage to extreme value theory is that it makes no assumptions about the bias data's distribution. The one assumption it does make is that each individual experiment's bias is normally distributed around some value, but unlike USL stats, it does not assume that the overall collection of the benchmark results is normally distributed. So again, WISPR works by having us provide the benchmark bias values as a training set for WISPR, and then it iteratively solves for a calculational margin such that f of m produces our desired probability, p, for our upper subcritical limit.
From here, the overall calculational margin equals m plus delta k margin plus delta k AOA plus another term, delta m. This delta m term attempts to account for the uncertainty in our whisper calculational margin, and it actually just equals the post-adjustment uncertainty from a surfer data assimilation calculation, which we'll discuss in the following lecture. This might go too far into the weeds, but it's worth noting that it is more mathematically convenient for extreme value theory to estimate the maximum credible value of a parameter rather than the minimal credible value. Thus, when we feed the computational biases into Whisper, it actually inverts the biases so that it finds the most extreme value of the negative value of these biases. The last detail to the Whisper method concerns how it weights the benchmark experiment bias results. It's important to weight the benchmark experiment biases, otherwise every single Whisper calculation would have the same USL, and it would have set this USL using the one most extreme bias that's present in our entire benchmark library. This approach is a little too conservative even for Whisper, and so we'll want to make sure that Whisper only uses the most highly similar benchmark experiments when it computes the upper subcritical limit for some application. Unfortunately, setting the extreme value theory weights to equal the C sub Ks for each benchmark experiment does not produce good results. It simply gives too much weight to marginally similar experiments. After all, a data point with a C sub K of 1 is much more than twice as valuable as a point with a C sub K of 0.5. Instead, Whisper uses this equation to calculate its benchmark weights, where C sub K of i is the C sub K for each i benchmark case, where C sub K max is the maximum C sub K present between the benchmarks and our target application, and C sub K cutoff is the C sub K cutoff for the benchmarks that we decide to include in the Whisper calculation. So how do we decide how many benchmarks to include in a Whisper calculation? Whisper automatically and iteratively decides how many benchmarks to include, such that the sum of all benchmark weights equals 30. If we have more highly similar benchmark experiments, then Whisper needs to include fewer experiments. And if we lack similar experiments, then Whisper will need to include more and more. The goal here is to balance having a statistically significant number of experiments while still deferring to only the most similar experiments. So how does Whisper compare to the other USL methods? One huge advantage to Whisper is that it is inherently conservative. Our calculational margin is dominated by the most extreme biases and adding additional benchmark experiments can only increase our margin. It will not make Whisper less conservative. Another advantage is that Whisper assumes nothing about the distribution of the set of benchmark experiment biases, only that individual bias distributions follow a normal distribution. Lastly, Whisper's calculational margin and its upper subcritical limit estimate have an intuitive interpretation. There is a certain probability, p, that a randomly sampled bias will be less extreme than this limit. The USL stats method also provides subcritical limits that have intuitive interpretations, but as we'll see in the next lecture, the surfer method's USL estimates are a little bit more hazy than these other methods, and they don't have quite an intuitive interpretation. Despite its ease of use and tendency to be very conservative, there are some drawbacks to the Whisper method. First, and just like the Surfer method, Whisper does not produce a 95-95 confidence interval for our USL. While NewReg 6698 prefers USLs that come attached with a 95-95 confidence interval, it's not completely necessary to provide the USL in this form. In fact, you can probably argue that the Whisper USL estimates are so conservative that they're even better than a 95-95 confidence interval. The next, and perhaps most noteworthy drawback to Whisper, is that some of its methods and limits seem arbitrary. There's no strong theoretical reasoning for why each benchmark's weight should be given by this ratio of C sub Ks, nor is there any justification for why the sum of the weights should equal 30. These limits were determined by Kudrowski and Brown through unpublished studies when they developed Whisper, 
and there may be a research opportunity to better understand the rationale behind these limits. Lastly, it's also not clear if the delta m term, which again is the post-adjustment bias uncertainty from a surfer calculation, is necessary in the calculational margin. If Whisper computes m correctly, then there should be no reason why we need to add additional margin beyond m, delta k margin, and delta k AOA. Yet the Whisper method chooses to add this additional delta m margin for additional conservatism. Nonetheless, Whisper provides an extraordinarily conservative method for estimating upper subcritical limits. If I had to design a subcritical operation that my mother or my wife were to operate, then I would probably use the Whisper method to estimate the USL for this system. However, setting our upper subcritical limit to 0.5 is also extraordinarily conservative. But we choose not to do this because it removes some of the much needed flexibility for operators to get their jobs done. Whisper is still a fairly new USL method, and we'll see in the coming years if it is widely adopted by the nuclear criticality safety field. This concludes our lecture on the Whisper USL method. In the next lecture, we'll discuss the Surfer Data Assimilation and Data Adjustment method, which compares the results of benchmark experiments and computed eigenvalues to calibrate our nuclear data and minimizes the computational bias present in our benchmark experiment simulations in a way that perhaps allows us to estimate the computational bias for our application cases.